Tyler Harris spoke to the media about his injury, and we break down what he said and what it means for his future in Miami. Plus, a new player poll had some interesting results about how the Heat roster and head coach Eric Spolstra are viewed around the league. And we get dig into some stats that could provide a key to Miami winning Game 2 on Wednesday night. All that and more on today's Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Goldberg here with David Ramil. However, you might be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Giannis is listed as doubtful for the Bucs tonight. I also want to get to this player survey from The Athletic. Some interesting stats that could help decide game two against the Bucs tonight in a minute. But I want to start with what Tyler Hero said about what is essentially a season-ending injury here. He told reporters in Milwaukee of his broken hand, quote, It sucks, obviously, being at home in Milwaukee and being in the playoffs. You work so hard all year to be in this moment where I feel like I had some things to prove this postseason. So it was a tough moment. I still can't believe it. It'll probably sink in Wednesday night when I can't suit up. It's my first time breaking a bone and unfortunate timing. Stay positive and I'll be back stronger than ever. I'll be back. So other than that Arnold Schwarzenegger kicker there, what do you think he means by uh, having something to prove uh, this postseason? And do you agree that he has something to prove this postseason or had something to prove? I do. Uh, I think. The quote, as I've mentioned before, uh, you know, the regular seasons where you make your name, the playoffs are where you make your fame. And I think everybody recalls Tyler Hero's rookie season in the Orlando bubble and his breakout. But those were with lowered expectations and he wasn't expected to have the kind of production he did in big moments starting in the finals due to injury. Also having big moments in the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Boston Celtics. Again, with lowered expectations. He was still coming off the bench. He wasn't. He's only a rookie. And yet after that, he's had an increased role. He's viewed as one of Miami's best offensive players and his production against the Bucs in 2021 and then against the Hawks, Sixers, et cetera, last season, not up to par, very inconsistent, the kind of level of production that was somewhat underwhelming. And I think a lot of people saw that and viewed his physicality or his inability to get his shot off consistently and said, look, if you're going to be able to do this during the regular season, be a 20 point per game score, better than a six man of the year, want to be in the starting lineup, all the things that we talked about all season and even during the off season leading up to this year. Now all of a sudden everybody kind of views Tyler as a key component of Miami's offense. As we've talked about over the last couple of days, he's going to be missed of that. There's no doubt. And yet there were still some questions regarding how consistent a scorer he'd be in those situations. And Jimmy Butler has said himself said uh, yesterday's practice that he was looking forward to seeing Tyler embrace the challenge of being a better defender because he had seen Tyler trend more positively in that direction over the course of the regular season. And so there was a lot for Tyler to prove, not just his ability to defend players, but also to be able to get a shot off against some of the top tier competition and to do so consistently when the games mattered most. So I agree 100 percent that he was. He did have something to prove in this playoff series for however long it lasts. And look, there's still a chance, however slim it might be, that he'll be back in time for the NBA Finals. But Miami has a hard, long road to get to that position, let me tell you. Uh, He averaged 12.6 points per game in 15 playoff games last year. He was shooting 40% from the field, 22.9% from three-point range. uh, Turned the ball over 1.8 times a game, only 2.8 assists. So... The year before that, 9.3 points per game in the playoffs on 31% shooting in that first round sweep to the Bucs. And then, as you mentioned, his rookie year was awesome. 16 points a game as a rookie in that bubbles uh, run, 21 games. He shot uh, 43% overall, 37.5% from three-point range. He was great. Uh, I don't know that he had something to prove. I I appreciate the self-awareness. I appreciate the fact that he feels that way and wanted to go out. And there's a competitive fire to that, that you obviously appreciate if you're a heat fan and if you're heat coaches and if you're his teammates, but 
I don't know. I just, I guess I just sort of dismissed the notion in general, like these players have anything. He's the sixth man of the year. He averaged 20 points per yeah. game in the regular season. I know that some people are like regular season, postseason, but like, we're also just talking about Tyler Hero. And I love Tyler Hero. You know, I ride with Tyler Hero. But when we talk about like players that have something to prove in the playoffs, like we're talking about James Harden, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, a few years ago, players like Giannis, like those are the players who actually have something to prove in the playoffs. The guys that are carrying their teams um, and, and and have a history of falling short. And I don't know, even if Tyler Hero's postseason last year was a little disappointing, I don't mm. I don't care about the year before that and the sweep to the Bucs. The Heat were a mess that year. I, I don't care. Jimmy Butler was terrible. Bam, everybody was terrible. I don't care about that one. Throw it out. Last year, he had the groin injury. I still think that it was uh, a more major injury than he was letting on. Obviously, he was able to play it through it, him. unlike breaking his hand. Yeah. But I... I don't, I don't, I think it was more major than he was letting on at the time. I don't care. I don't care. I, he has nothing to prove to me. I know he's a great scorer. I know he's a great playmaker. To me, when I think about Tyler Hero and his career trajectory, how he was going to perform in these playoffs have very little to do with him individually in his career. Obviously, he My, raises the ceiling on Miami yeah. and what they can do. But when I think long term about Tyler Hero, I just want to, I've seen the progression year over year. With his game, I know he's yeah. getting better. I know he's better now than he was as a rookie, despite being better in the playoffs as a rookie than he's been any other year in his career. He's a better player now than he was as a rookie. So I care less about the playoffs, man. I don't think he had anything to prove, at least that, not to me. I, that's that's a strange take from you there. I, I, my counter to that is like so many players are viewed through the lens of what they produce during the playoffs, and I think the regular season we've seen this. We've seen this from this Heat team. Players care less during the regular season. And so you have for him to be able to get 20, 25 points during a mid-February game that nobody gives a crap about doesn't strike. Well, I wouldn't dismiss fans. averaging 20 points a game as just no, like I'm nobody not cares for 82 either. games. I'm not, I'm not dismissing it. I'm saying that we all know what he's capable of, but we haven't seen him do it consistently during the playoffs. And if you're looking to the future of Miami's franchise, and a lot of fans are because who knows what will happen this offseason, you also have to consider the possibility that Tyler's role is going to increase over the next few years with Jimmy probably entering some decline during due to age. And as a result, he and Bam, another player with questions regarding his playoff performance, have to be able to show consistently what they can do in the postseason when it matters most. And it does matter. And it does matter to, to players. It matters a, a lot more to fans. And you want to be able to see – that he can do it. Maybe you're not going to, that's not the entirety of the book on Tyler. It's like, oh, well, he, he shot, you know, four points less per game during the playoffs than he did during the regular season. But you want to see him do it consistently so that you could say you're not worried about it. And I think that's a huge concern and it's a legitimate But he doesn't have to be there fans. yet. He doesn't have to do that yet. To your point, we're not at that point where Jimmy Butler is 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 not able to carry but even in his team. role like to, to to beat milwaukee we've talked about this in the recent episodes like they have to play as perfectly as possible in order yeah, to knock no, off for a sure. superior opponent that's not what we're talking about though i, I think that for yeah. the heat to to get through the playoffs tyler hero has to play well i'm not saying that tyler hero can go out there and just play like garbage and it's fine that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying he has nothing to prove to me right when if, if you're just going to basic mm. base everything off of the playoffs then I guess you would have me to believe that he was a better player as a rookie than he is now. And we both know that that's not no. true. So just to me, he has nothing to prove to me. I know I'm looking again, I'm looking big picture. He is getting better every single year as a basketball player, regardless of how this postseason was going to go for him. And now it's not going anywhere because he's got, he's broken his hand and he's not coming back because the heat are not going to the finals. But I, to me, I don't care about that, man. Like, Look, I shouldn't say I don't care about it because obviously you want him to play well and you want the Heat yeah, to go as far as they can. But in terms of what he is proving as a basketball player, he is not at the point yet where there is actual pressure on him. Oh yeah, to is. to, to that, carry a team in the playoffs. There is no pressure on him. Okay, that not is, carry. Like, that's reserved for not Jimmy. Even carry. That's reserved for Bam. That's reserved yeah, for, for Giannis and Embiid. Embiid. Yeah, sure. That's that's who those are reserved that. for. It's not carrying, but even like in his role, star in your role. Like he said this. Like he wants to be a starter. Guess what, buddy? Now you're there. You've got to be able to show this consistently. In the office. I can't believe I'm having this debate. Like I mean, he has to be better, even if it's just in a more limited role and not expected to carry the team. He's going to be better. And guess what? Would you have thought if differently had of, gone, of him if he averaged 14 points a game on 40% shooting versus yeah. 18 points and a I'll game on 50 And I'll tell you who else shooting. would. More importantly, Pat Riley would. And Pat, I mean, there were already people making a, a look a somewhat callous, uh, not somewhat, totally callous, 
oh, too bad that he's played his last game in Miami. Like, you would think differently of his ceiling as a player. If he struggled during this playoff for his third consecutive year, I, I would think that it would be so that would be the thing. Lower. If he did that's a good point though. It's if, if he struggled again and the heat and he was held and the heat I still but this team is not good. And I don't think that you could blame Tyler Hero for the fact that this team was not the number one seed this year again. Like it's 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 everything well, else kind of beyond that. Jimmy Bam and Tyler. If he didn't play well again, I guess Pat Riley would have to say, Well, if he's not the dude, let's trade that dude. But I also think that it's kind of already there. Like if Damian Lillard is a table for Tyler Hero, you make that trade okay. regardless of what you feel yes. like about Tyler Hero. So hey, can, I, don't can know. We I, just, I think it's for a little overstated, time? I should say. It doesn't not okay. matter, but it's being overstated. Can we refute for the millionth time? Because I still see comments and people putting, you know, things like this on, on, on social media. They didn't include him in a trade for James Harden or Kevin Durant because those trades were never going to manifest. They would have included him in a heartbeat if that was the final straw. If Houston's Raphael Stone, their general manager, says, no, no, we'll send you James Harden if you're willing to include Tyler. Tyler would be a Houston Rock, and they wouldn't have drafted Jalen Green. Like I, He would be a Brooklyn sure. Net. Like, they might I don't have still know Jalen Green, but I, I don't <laughs> I, I don't know that the Heat were that in love with the idea of trading for James Harden in the first place. They wanted Kevin Durant, but to your point, they didn't have Mikal Bridges, Cameron Johnson, and four first round picks. So right. what Donovan what, Mitchell we have this a idea I, I, think, Tyler Hero. I think fans have this idea of like, okay, they offered this and they did not offer that. It is never that it is very I should say very rarely that black and white. There's conversations right. that happen, and I think Pat Riley had those con- let's just talk about Durant. Riley had those conversations with with Brooklyn. And I think yeah. Riley had conversations with Utah about yeah. Donovan Mitchell and very quickly realized, oh, we don't have the horses to really be in this right. race based on yeah. what it is that they're getting offered and, and what they're talking about with other teams. But um Giannis's status for tonight. What is it? How's it gonna impact game two and maybe even beyond this series? Plus, what do rival players think of the Heat's best players? We'll talk about that next, but first. Today's episode of Locked on Heat is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. It's the coolest game that I've played in a long time. I've always thought that I could be a great NBA general manager, and as it turns out, I'm right. If you've had the same thought and have fantasized about managing your own basketball franchise, go and download Ultimate Pro Basketball GM right now. The game allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise, playing through seasons, leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty in the simulation, you're responsible for dealing with challenging personalities, hiring the right coaches, hiring the right assistants, trading players, training players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, and all the ups and downs of multiple seasons. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go uh, as you want, when you want to. I think I'm in year 2045 now in wow. my game, David. Yeah, you've got... Uh, three championships under my belt. Uh, my Hall of Fame point guard just retired, uh, as did my Hall of Fame power forward, who I, I moved to the center. And his last year of his career actually ended up being a pretty good move. We made a little bit of a playoff push there when nobody expected us to. But um, rebuilt, traded a bunch of players, uh, some other veterans who didn't retire, kind of did the, the the Boston to Brooklyn Kevin Garnett swap, got a bunch of draft picks, got some four- and five-star guys. Uh, that are young, kind of feels like a little bit of a young, like OKC team squad. Bunch of long ball handlers, spacing the floor, switching defense, fun stuff. Um, you can also play Locked On Heat listeners can get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. Uh, to download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or just look it up in your app store. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM, start your dynasty today thanks for making locked on heat your first listen every day we're available on apple Podcasts and spotify youtube please do subscribe every day or as you can find us tonight with a recap of game two immediately following the game Giannis is listed as doubtful for tonight's game which basically means that the milwaukee bucks think he has a 25 percent chance of playing uh but when you listen to Giannis and and bucks coach mike budenholzer after practice after the, they were optimistic so are they are they kind of trying to misdirect here? Yeah. yeah, is it a little bit of gamesmanship? Uh, could this be more serious than they initially talked about? What do you think, David? Certainly seems that way. I, I, I you know, I, I thought it's not to dismiss the severity of the injury, but it, I thought that 
you know, we've seen Giannis come back from these types of small falls before, and, and it did set in, and, and maybe there is some stiffness. But and you he know, stayed you did... in initially too, which I think right. obviously he had to leave, and he wasn't he wasn't right, but he did stay in initially, so I think that's part of it too. Yeah, that is certainly, and, and yet you know, you, you you talked about Steph Curry's injury. We saw that from Jimmy Butler. Like it, it does impact players. Like you would think, oh, your con- your tailbone, you know, you're right above your rear end or whatever. And it's like it's not a for these players anyway. There's not a whole lot of cushion there. There's not a lot of fat to absorb those kind of falls, you know, <laughs> maybe so for other people, like, but yeah, not, not these yeah. guys. <laughs> no, not these guys. So it's like, that's like bone on muscle falling there and crashing from a Oof. great height. So yeah, that, that it could hurt a substantial amount. And look, and even it's more to the point. I think the stiffness is what everybody's kind of considering here. The fact that it might make it so painful for him to move in the way that he's accustomed to that I, I think is a good point. And, and look, there's a comment that we received via YouTube, a, a, uh, a viewer named Ronald Fonte writes in, I got swiped on the forums during a putback dunk in recreational league. Shout out to you for being able to dunk in rec league. My lower body continued forward. My Old upper brag. went back and I fell straight down on my lower back area. Two minutes later, when things tightened up, I could barely walk, could barely move. For about a week it took about six weeks before i could play again with some tightness little over two months before i was back to normal so that is a lot more concerning um you yeah. know that that with if you're the bucks and you look and we should put the caveat obviously ronald great athlete that he is is not Giannis Antetokounmpo, and he's also not with the same kind of level of medical care and access to medical care that you know Giannis does have and the bucks have available to them so there's significant differences in that but yet we've seen injuries like this right. impact players, players for a full out period of time. Yeah. yeah, this is despite the fact that they are supreme athletes, it, it doesn't necessarily excuse them from from injury at the time. So I don't know. Doubtful. That's a, a little bit of a concern. That there. was the, that was the twist, right? And I just to to kind of go into what the the, the language of this. I think we were expecting questionable. Right. Probable would have been a surprise. Uh, the difference between questionable. And doubtful is is a significant one, right? That's a downgrade from questionable to doubtful. Doubtful is worse if you're the Bucks. Um, I that to me was a twist. I did not expect doubtful. It is being officially called a lower back contusion. Uh, if tailbone was involved in the description of the injury, I would think that there's no way Giannis is playing tonight. And he's probably gonna miss several games and could miss the rest of this series. And if yeah. that's the case, I said this after the game, uh, after game one when we talked about it, David. If Giannis is not playing in this series, this series is even. I still think Milwaukee is deeper, but I think yeah. Miami's top-end talent is better. Um, when it comes to Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, I don't think Chris Middleton has looked the same this year. Drew Holiday is a fringe all-NBA guy. He's awesome. Uh, right, but yeah. give me give me Jimmy and Bam over, over Drew and, and Middleton, I think. I, I feel pretty confident about that. Um, and then beyond that, I know the Tyler, the, the Tyler Hero injury is a big one. I think the Bucks are deeper. We'll see. But a lot more even versus than a, than a Bucks team that's the number one seed and has Giannis, right? And so um, this is significant. It's significant because if he does miss tonight and the Heat are able to go into Milwaukee and get another game and bring the series back to Miami up 2-0, Giannis or no Giannis, giving the Heat a 2-0 handicap and then two games at home, that's that's uphill sledding for a Bucks team, even if they do get uh, the MVP candidate back. So yeah. um, this is significant, even if he just misses the one game. But I would not rule out maybe missing several games. Who knows? Doubtful is 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 serious. I've seen this comment from many people, and I tend to kind of agree that the winner of tonight's game is likely to win a series. And and I don't. I like I said. I, I historically think that's, that's true. If a team go well. No, if the Heat win this, you think the, if the winner Heat even win, if Milwaukee wins? Yeah, because Giannis. I mean, sorry, if if Giannis plays and they win tonight, um, then all of a sudden the yeah, momentum kind of feels, shifts back in yeah. their favor. And I don't think the Bucks are scared of winning in Miami either. Going yeah. on the road, we've seen this from the Heat. Uh, you know, the, the, their fear they don't have the fear of going into the road on the road and and, and having to find a way to steal it. They they did so in Game One. So sure. I think if if they get that momentum back. They travel to Miami and they feel engaged so, uh, and ready to. So I, I is think this it's a must a, win. Are you saying this is a must win? Game it's, two? A, it, it's a pivotal game for the Heat. Okay. I think for the Heat, as underwhelming as your regular season is, and then you could say as underwhelming as your roster is, especially without Tyler Hero. Yeah. If you can lock in and steal game two, and it is a steal, then sure. all of a sudden your chances of uh, winning the series increase exponentially. Um, 
it wouldn't be shocking if Giannis didn't play and if this was a long-term injury. This happens every year in the playoffs. There is a big injury to a star player that kind of shifts the tectonic plates of the postseason, right? We see it every single year. And unfortunately, it could be Giannis. And I say, because you just never want to see a player like that go down. You want to see the best competition. Even Jimmy Butler after game one says he hoped Giannis would play. That's how these players feel, right? Yeah. I'm sure the Bucks are disappointed that Tyler Hero broke his hand. They want to play the best competition when it gets to the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but stuff like this happens, man. Like okay. Kawhi won in 2019 because half the Warriors starting lineup got hurt. Like it, it and nobody takes that. Nobody takes it away from him. And I'm not taking it away from him. Uh, but stuff the like this are... does happen in the playoffs. Who cares? I, whatever fans. Um, <laughs> no, no, they, yeah, no asterisk goes in the record book, but the fans I do, will always discount it to some degree. I do want to try this again, though, for our social media clips. David, is this a must win game for the Miami Heat? Yes, it is, Wes. <laughs> that was not convincing. All right. Uh, we, we didn't get to the athletic player poll. We'll do that on the other side of the break. Plus, some fun with numbers. Uh, we take some looks at uh, keys for the Heat getting game two. Giannis or no Giannis? That's coming up next, David. But first, the listeners about our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. A lot of people are, you know, looking ahead and saying, you know, I want to go to this show, whether it's a comedy show or a, a concert, maybe even a game. But it's hard to find tickets and maybe you don't trust different sources out there for tickets. Well, Game Time is the fastest, easiest way to buy tickets for any event that you're looking forward to with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets, start getting hyped for the fun you'll have at these events. What I like best is that you can see exactly where you're going to sit. No more concerns about buying a ticket from some unknown venue. Maybe you, you, you're traveling for vacation or maybe you're there for work and you've got a few hours and you happen to catch a, a band or a, an artist that you want to see in person and you want to get tickets, but you're like, oh, I've never been to this venue before. Am I going to get stuck in the nosebleeds? Am I going to get stuck behind a column somewhere where I can't see anything? I've heard it happen before. It's a nightmare. You don't have to deal with that. With game time, you can see exactly where you're going to be sitting and you get the best prices available. You get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, two taps, and you're set. Tickets are set directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Everybody's gone paperless. Game time helps make it easy. But download the game time app, create an account, and use the code Locked on NBA. That's locked on NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, you create an account and you redeem the code locked on NBA for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm using uh, game time hopefully soon for a Marlins game. That's my plan. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I would love to go to a Marlins game, but you know how it is in our it's kind of short notice. I thought, oh, free Saturday afternoon. Let's just go, uh, let's go catch a few innings, something like that. It'd be fun. Yeah. Any any team in particular you wanted to see? Uh, nope, just the Marlins. I don't really care <laughs> about the other teams. I don't really know anything about baseball. Um, thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Every day, or as you can find us tonight with a recap of Game Two immediately following the game. Of course, you can reach Lockdown Heat on Twitter, Instagram. You can email us lockdownheat at gmail .com. Get your questions in tonight during the game using that hashtag #AskLOHeat on Twitter. Maybe we'll answer them on the show. Uh, the Athletic Player Poll came out yesterday. Um, MVP, you know, it was a sample of basically 55 players, a small sample in a league of 450 players. It wasn't just 55 players. I think everybody was asked to, to answer. And at the most, I, from what I saw, 103 votes for any particular category. So some people were like, okay. no, I'm not answering. So it's that. like sort of between 50 and 100, basically per question. Yeah. Okay. And there's a bunch of different kinds of questions. That's a good note. A bunch like who the MVP is, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm just going to read you where the Miami Heat sort of and players and, and personalities sort of ranked in this thing. Uh, six percent of players said that Bam Adebayo was the league's best defender. Six percent said that Jimmy Butler was the most overrated player. Ten mm. percent said that they would want to play for Eric Spolstra. I think the mm. leader in that category was Greg Popovich by a pretty he wide was. margin. Yeah. Three percent said they'd least want to fight Udonis Haslam, where former <laughs> Heat player James Johnson was like the seventy percent vote getter. It was crazy. <laughs> Um, two percent said that Miami's arena had the worst fans. Now, those six percent, those ten percent, those three percent feel low. Uh, they're not because most of, like you said, it wasn't multiple choice, it was sort of just an open question poll. So, most players sort of got like six yeah, percent a... here, eight percent there. Like, that was sort of the leader in most of these categories. So, the fact that six percent said Bam was the best defender, six percent that Jimmy was more overrated, 
that's a that's a significant enough, I suppose. Uh, question. I would imagine the most overrated player was probably the question that got the least amount of players answering. Yeah, but uh, it was. What, among all of those things, we don't have to go into all of it. But among that list, what stands out to you as most interesting? From the Heat perspective, I would have guessed that the the, uh, the widely held perception that Eric Spolster is a coach that you want to play for. I, I it's not necessarily a knock on Spo, but you know they run a pretty tight ship here. A lot of fans, even to this day, after a decade plus of success, and and you can't discount it in any other way. Like he is a successful, one of the best coaches of all time, et cetera. And yet, some people are still saying, "Oh, you don't play over yard seven for thirty minutes a game. You don't know what you're doing." Right. Uh, that's not to say that he's you know without faults. Obviously, he's fallible. But I, the fact that so many players, whatever the percentage might be, however many votes that are tallied want to play for a team like Miami that is known for pushing players and making them work hard and perhaps push the boundaries of what they're used to even as NBA players I think speaks volumes about how widely respected he is and and you know I was uh we talked about recently uh the Eric Spolster profile by Lee Jenkins and there was the the piece there uh, oh no, I'm sorry. It was in the athletic. It was the Jason Quick piece there about Jason. Uh, sorry, Josh Richardson and the three pointers and and how that changed the trajectory of his career. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, Spo has never shied away from wanting to get into the mud with his players and do the work, and that has to be accepted with a high level mm -hmm. of respect. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, you might not like Spo, you might not like his methods, but I think you trust him, and I think his ability as a communicator is unparalleled perhaps second per, to, to just greg popovich sure. who is an all-time great so the top three was popovich steve kerr and eric spolstra and what are those three guys have in top exactly exactly the fact that popovich well popovich been in the league for his entire life it feels like and most of these players <laughs> lives but spo not a former nba player steve kerr is in there as obviously is the guy that played with michael jordan former nba player right. a lot of success championships um, and there's other guys on that list that were also former players. So the fact that Spo is not on that is is as high as he is and not a former player, I do think also is meaningful. Um, players talk, man. Like you mentioned that Josh Richardson story. You think Jason Quick was the first guy that Josh Richardson told that story to? No way. He's been telling that story to uh, teammates, uh, whether it's in San Antonio, Philadelphia, wherever he's playing now, New Orleans. Um, like he's been telling those stories. And that's the thing is, Players tell, to uh, tell stories about Greg Popovich. They tell stories about Steve Kerr, and they tell stories about Eric Spolstra. And players want to play for those guys. They want to play with great communicators. They want to play for head coaches who feel like they care about them. And I think that's sort of when, when you know, when I cover the Warriors and Steve Kerr and and everything you hear about Greg Popovich having covered the league as long as we have and, and, and what we hear now covering Eric Spolstra, like, that's sort of the common thread is, they really care about me as a person off the basketball. Right. They take the time, right? Like right. Um, Justice Winslow talking about stories of Eric Spolster waking yes. up early and going on long walks with him. Like, I cannot tell you how much that matters to these players who feel like commodities, right? Tradable, cuttable, draftable, signable commodities uh, who are social media highlights and all these things. They want to feel like they're people. And and these coaches make them feel like that. And so I think that's a big reason. And also the other part of this is you play for Greg Popovich, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to go somewhere else. You're going to get paid. You play for Steve Kerr, you learn a lot. You have some success. You go somewhere else, you're going to get paid. You play for Spo, you're going to get paid, man. We've seen that over and over and over again. Yeah. So that's an also that's also got to be a big part of it. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, all good points there. Uh, you know, who doesn't want to work for a boss that treats them like a human being and doesn't sure. just say, you know, you got to come in on weekends. You just stay late. Uh, I don't care if you've got a birthday or event to go to. No, you can't take vacation time. Like nobody wants to deal with that. And I think Spo has shown the flexibility. He's like, yeah, when you're on the clock, you work hard, but I think these guys are more likely to do so anyway. And, and, and I think it also speaks volumes about the fact that Tom Thibodeau, a coach who's notorious right. for grinding players careers away for putting you out there for 40 plus minutes per game, you can for, lose for, income playing for Tom Thibodeau, playing 42 yeah. minutes a night for one season. You're like, man, no doubt. You just you just shaved two years off my career. Um, yeah. one player also they, they they voted like greatest player of all time. Most of them said Michael Jordan. An overwhelming uh, amount of them also play uh, uh, voted for LeBron James. LeBron, Some Kobe. said Kobe. Uh, one player voted for Tracy McGrady. That to me is crazy. Tracy McGrady. Uh, if anybody has any, 
if if you're one of these people that thinks players should be voting on MVP and end of season awards, just look at this and you'll t- and this is the reason why they they shouldn't. Like that's everything I need. Just Tracy McGrady getting one vote as the the goat. Like forget it. Uh, fun with numbers. Let's talk about game two tonight. Um, so a couple of stats that I want to throw at you, David, and we'll just do this quickly. But um, this one actually comes from uh, Cooper Moorhead from MiamiHeat.com. Mm. Uh, Bam and Jimmy, uh, their four their forty five total shot attempts in game one that produced fifty eight points. Uh, without factoring Jimmy's 11 assists. That was the most uh, shot attempts they've taken in, in the same game as members of the Miami Heat. That 45 total attempts, the most attempts they've taken together as members of the Miami Heat. Uh, mm-hmm. Going further, that Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo pick and roll. Uh, they used that 11 times in game one, more than the Heat usually use that. That's above their average. So that Butler, Bam, pick and roll, especially with Tyler Hero out, they're leaning more and more into that. And I think with Tyler Hero out, or I know with Tyler Hero out, that they're, they're going to have to get close to that 45 shot shot attempts combined again, and probably for the rest of the series and forever but along their playoff run goes. Guess who else knows that? That's the Milwaukee Bucks coaching staff. So that's yep. that's the 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 flip side of all these statistics is like yes, we're aware of them now, and we can expect a trend in the right direction there, or at least continue to, to build off of that. Yeah. yeah. But Milwaukee's gonna do everything they can to stop us. So. Um, yeah, the Athletics Eric Neem had a great breakdown, and I and I do suggest that our listeners go follow him and 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 read his writing because he does a great job covering the Milwaukee Bucks, and it gives you a look into what the the other side is thinking about. And his whole story today, kind of previewing Game Two, was stop Jimmy from getting to the basket, and and do this to Bam, and that goes to our second uh, uh, stat here. Fun with numbers. Bam made eight of 16 mid range jumpers in game one. So short range or long range mid range jumpers, basically in the paint outside the restricted area, eight of 16, 50%, uh, in game one. He also had two free throws coming off of that. So when you factor into points per possession, what that means for Miami's offensive rating and Bam's offensive rating, uh, that's basically 102 points per 100 possessions. Despite the fact that he's shooting 50% from mid range, which feels good. That sounds good, right? But the worst offense in the NBA scored 108.4 points per 100 possessions. So even with Bam making half of his mid-range jumpers, which is an incredible rate because he usually hits 47% on those looks in the regular season, which is still one of the best rates in the league, that's still basic and getting free throws off of it. It's still equal to something way worse than the worst offense in the NBA. Now, that's a small sample. You're not really uh, considering all the other things and what that does to Milwaukee's defense and all these things. But just from a bare basic, just the numbers, look at this. People wonder why Mike Boonholzer would play that drop coverage and not have Brooke Lopez play up on, on Bam Adebayo. That's why. is because Boonholzer is playing the numbers here, and he's basically saying, as long as Bam's not shooting 80% from mid-range, we're yeah. going to live with this because even if he keeps shooting these, it's still something equal to the worst offense in the NBA, even if he's making half of those shots. We're going to let him have them. I wonder if Miami recognizes that as well and then tries to swing the ball more out towards the perimeter, especially if you know Giannis doesn't play, their defense is, is drawn to some degree either by Bam or Jimmy or somebody else. Uh, I imagine it would be those two players because they are Miami's best offensive options, but I wonder if we'll see more than the 25 three-point shot attempts because I think that's going to have to be a key for Miami to win is they're going to have to shoot probably closer to that 40 number that yes. you and I have talked about all season long and try – as unlikely as it is to at least shoot over 40%. I mean, it would be better if they shot closer this. to 50%, but yeah, 40% with 43 three point yeah. attempts. I think that's, that's your magic number there. Their target all year long has been 43 point attempts. And when you say you think that the heat know that like they know this and that's why they started to shift away from that after the all-star break and saying like, right. Hey, like that mid range jumper has been sweet and all, but we got to get, uh, at the basket, that draws more and one attempts and things like that, and then obviously crank up the three point rate. Yeah, the, it was. It's awesome that they shot sixty percent from three point range. That's never going to happen again. So you you got to how are you going to match that production from three point range? Well, you got to crank up the volume. Twenty five attempts from three is not what you want. And when you kind of remove yourself from the the sixty percent and the one hundred thirty points that Miami scored, hmm. they kind of. Like the Bucks kind of gave them the shots that they wanted to, and I think the the Bucks would live with a similar shot profile. What they want to take away is the the straight line drives that Jimmy Butler got at the basket, the lack of closeouts on those three point attempts, like just playing harder defensively. But in terms of the shot profile, I think they would live yeah. with it, uh, yeah. with what the Heat got in Game One. So the Heat, that's it. So now the onus is kind of on the Heat 
to change that shot pro- profile, right? Yeah. Especially in game two tonight. Thanks again for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Remember to subscribe to new episodes of Locked On Heat on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Every day or find us tonight with a recap of game two immediately following the game. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. You can find us there. David, thanks for joining me. You got it, Wes.